Hi everyone, I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks for subscribing, for taking the time to check out my research. There is a species living on the moon. But today we're talking about many, and just a few actually, of many asteroids and unknown celestial objects that I've captured just last year, all in the same period of three months actually. Three months time, it was incredible. A square, it reminds me of Ryugu. And why do I put a name to an asteroid? Because I've looked at many asteroids and I was finding them. They were by the moon. Here's one by the moon. Now, 67P. For Pete's sakes, I wonder if it's Jimmy, the real Jimmy Roberts. Is it 67P that he talked about? Anyways, either way, it's an S-shaped um, asteroid or unknown object that was went by the moon that I saw twice. I saw it last year. I saw it twice in the same day. I, I thought I saw it beside the sun at one point. And this is an exquisite asteroid. And the ones that I caught, I was capturing so many, I never went back to research them or to look them up or to even examine them. Look at how they are spraying. They were spraying last uh, summer. It was absolutely incredible. Look at the bottom of the screen. You clearly see a celestial object right there at the bottom of the screen. And um, here it is. We're going to zoom up. They were spraying in line over top of these lights that were appearing. But you know what? It wasn't normal. You saw a star on the bottom there. This is no star. It's a planetoid. See, these are stars that you can see. But the other object was so huge as compared to the other stars, you just knew right off the bat that it was in no way a star. So I'm going to zoom out when I caught the moon. Uh, whatever. It doesn't mean it's 67P, guys. I'm just putting a name to a shape. It's an S-shaped, definitely an S-shaped, but I did go see 67P and it's scary. And you know what? 67P, as I caught it going by, three frames. I lost the other two frames, but they change shapes. This thing is bending as it's going by. Yeah, this is Siri. We're looking at Siri. Siri, by the way, is a star system. There are several stars inside of the star Siri. Um, it's just an amazing star. I could look at it for hours and hours. It's always different. But you can see the other celestial objects inside of this. And people got mad the last time I had captured Siri. Um, I missed it. I said, I'm going to go up and get it, take a look at it. Siri, I got this the other night, just a couple of nights ago. Just an amazing star system because it is not one star. So this is pretty cool. Look at the shapes it's doing. Now we're looking at it. Um, it's the detail. That's all we're seeing. There's no color in this. There's a, I always say it's an x-ray filter. There's actually three processes, not, not three filters. There's three processings. I like process. There it is. You just saw a celestial object. Now you see it square. You see it triangular. We see the shapes. We see a bar there, like an object go further out. These objects are spiraling around one another and intertwining with one another. It's an entire, as big as a solar system. This is huge, guys. We think, you know, these things, we call them stars. They're not just stars. They are systems. They are gigantic, ginormous. And we don't know half of them about them. So I like slowing Siri down. Um, they should have called it Ceres, right? They're like four or five systems, I think, um, independent objects or celestial objects inside of this light. And the, the most amazing thing for anyone who knows who, or even has seen at least just three or four stars uh, through a telescope or any other device, they are very particular. So you know when you're looking at Siri because they have uh, their colors, they have the way they uh, spiral around, uh, uh, different intensities of light. And of course, this is all registered. It's called science, right? But when you look at it, the common sense of it all, just looking at it with your eyes, you know? Eyes won't lie to you. And you do see the systems appear. The celestial objects themselves appear through spurts as they turn around. This uh, is with a filter. Uh, so we can see each independent color and uh, ray that's appearing. This is another chemtrail, and it's just to say that it's between night and daytime, between, uh, again, the light and darkness. That's where the, the details appear, everyone. Look at that. 
look at that and look at the size of that and don't tell me that's a star. The, the ones that are uh, beside them, the three other ones are not even stars. I think the little one on top could be a star, but these are loose objects. These are lava filled objects. They're rocks on fire in the lower atmosphere of Earth. NASA declared them the days, if not the day itself that I, I made these videos. Everyone that's following me remembers those events and the asteroids were plentiful. Look at it. It's a fireball in the sky. It looks like a flat disc. It could be round. It could be flat. It could be a planetoid size. It's very, very big, that I assure you. And looking at the gases um, intertwining on the surface of these objects, that's exactly what we're looking at is, are the gases, uh, deadly gases. Asteroids could be deadly. A gigantic asteroid could come beside the Earth and we'd probably all die from the toxins that are inside of this, obviously. Another amazing asteroid, unknown celestial object that I found last year, 2017, July. Look at what we're looking at, June or July. I could be mistaken a month, actually. I have to be careful with the, the months that I'm saying because this was in the period of three months. Those following me remember this. Now watch this, okay? Um, it's dark and there are plumes of sulfur on this object. We're going to see it, okay, in a better way. I'm going to lift up the intensity here for you. And this is what intrigues me. And again, that same time, there was another object that everyone was declaring having seen with smoke billowing off of it. So I was literally finding, uh, very proud of it too, the objects that you know, NASA was declaring and other astronomers were finding. They were really out there. And then at one point, it just, it all died. And it's like, it's like everything disappeared and we couldn't see them anymore. Not, not as plentiful as I was in 2017. I was starting to wonder if I had magical powers. I mean, seriously, I was getting asteroids every day in that short period of maybe uh, 12 weeks. But it was intense, guys. And again, there was collisions deep in space. We're seeing the moon shifting and a bunch of things all coinciding at the same time. Hey, don't forget these hurricanes and storms, guys. I mean, look at the plumes. The hurricanes and storms on Earth. Category 5, Florence, right now going to hit the U.S. East Coast. Heading towards Jacksonville and the Carolinas, North Carolina. Um, there are said to be um, over a million people uh, asked to be evacuated. What are we looking at, guys? Good luck, everyone. Be safe. This is an amazing unknown celestial object that for the first time I had ever heard the word Red Kashina. Um, very, um, you know, Indian people, amazing um, people with cultures, background about, you know, I didn't know that all these cultures and religions had all these stories and beautiful legends and ancient, um, you know, even myths, some of them about some of these planets and asteroids and stars like hundreds, if not almost a thousand years ago. It's so interesting to uh, find out about other cultures, what they think about this. This is what I want to know. Look at what we're looking at. It looks like a planet that blew up in half, okay? We're looking at a half moon of some object that there is a very, very big dust coming from this. And this object is very red-ish, purplish. I showed it. I got a lot of good comeback on this. A lot of people were interested in it. And it's it was just an amazing object. I did find a real unknown celestial object fly by the sun. Okay. And we're looking at this in 3D, by the way. Amazing, amazing work on this. I worked so hard on it. And to get just the shape and the elevation and a low angle view of these asteroids, a zoomed in view, a clarified view, a sharpened view, it's hard. I worked on it. But the clearer the shot you get of a celestial object, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to um, show someone and edit it in this way without manipulating it. In the north sky during the November full moon, these objects were too bright to be um, stars. Maybe they were stars, but I'll tell you what, why were they so close? Why? 
were um, objects coming into the lower atmosphere of Earth. There was also a chemtrail that went over directly these. And that's the first time that I started understanding and saying to myself, maybe the chemtrails could also be hiding. Uh, I mean, why would they be spraying at night? Okay, why? Because it's the shift. When the stars come out, those celestial objects appear when they're in the lower atmosphere and they stick out like a sore thumb. These, I believe, are elements on the surface that form when asteroids, uh, either there's a collision or, or an explosion. You could see these pockets, guys. Look, it's amazing, of pure, possibly pure minerals, just my analogy, pure minerals of um, the intense heat, you know, making these elements. I mean, these are mixed mixtures of gases. It's incredible what an asteroid could hold. It could make diamonds. It could make gold. It could make any element uh, possible, elements we don't know of. Uh, deadly gases and elements uh, come from these unknown beautiful celestial objects. If you have any UFO videos that you own the copyrights to you'd like to have shown on my channel, please send them to BruceWartz75acommercialgmail.com.